Welcome back, everybody, to the Smart Getting Connect podcast. I am your host, Tom Libby. I'm one of the founders uh, of Smart Getting here. Uh, I am one of the founders here at Smart Getting Connect. And if you have watched this podcast in the past, you know I always get tongue tied at that point. So, uh, uh, but I have a, a, a new guest on with me today uh, in Melissa. And Melissa, one of the things that I do here on the podcast is I, I spend no time trying to identify the the pros and cons of your career. And I, so I just let you introduce yourself to the to, to our audience. So why don't you take a minute and tell everybody who you are and what you do? Awesome. Hey, everyone. My name is Melissa. I am a content writer for Local Business First. Uh, so Local Business First is a web design agency, um, and we really focus on yeah, affordable options for business owners to really build a professional and beautiful website. Um, we offer a bunch of other services too, like search engine optimization, Google business profile optimization, blog writing, and social media posting. Um, but my piece of the puzzle um, is to really work alongside our web designer, Olympia, um, to create all the content that goes along with building a new website. So basically, it's like taking all the information about somebody's business, uh, like their services, the problems that they solve for their customers, um, what makes them stand out, and then really create um, copy that's more like a story um, and that flows cohesively, that resonates with their customers, that sets people's websites up. Um, for their customers to take an action when they visit their website. Um, so that's my goal. Um, and that's what I do for Olympia. So I do all the blog writing, the social media posting. Um, I help project manage websites too. So I, I, I kind of do a lot. I do a little bit more than content writing, but the crux of everything is really for me to um, understand someone's business and then also use the SEO and competitor research to decide what type of content goes into their website. Um, and that's like a really big part of it. So yeah, I'll pause there. <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. No, that's a really good explanation. I actually like it. I, and, and it gives people a lot of, a lot to think about. Tell, talk, right. talk to us a little bit about the actual customer. What do they look like for you? Are they, are, is it like, do you guys focus on a particular vertical market, a particular, a uh, particular geographical section of the country? What, what do the companies usually look like that you, that you work with? Yeah, that's a great question. So our our name kind of gives us away, <laughs> local business first. So um, the heart of the business is really to work with small local businesses who have a few em employees and also like entrepreneurs who are solopreneurs, maybe you'll call them, um, who might be like a one man band. Um, but uh, essentially our web design platform is so flexible that we can create websites for any, any type of company, any size company. It really doesn't matter. Um, but we let we do like to focus on like local businesses who they have a lot to offer, but maybe they just don't know how to get found online or it's confusing or um, they just don't have the time to take on building their own website because they're doing so many things to keep the lights on and just, yeah, don't have time. Um, and we can, um, you know, meet people here in person in Massachusetts um, as well as South Carolina, but we can do everything virtually online. So we don't have a limit to where we can work with people um, and what type of business. If you take a look at our portfolio, we've built websites for everyone from, you know, personal trainers to tech company startups, to lawyers, to um, manufacturing companies. It really doesn't matter because um, we learn about the business as we go. And um, I think that's what makes us unique too. But yeah. <laughs> sounds kind of, sounds, I, I, first of all, I love the name of the company, Local Business First. It makes you feel like that if I'm looking for a particular uh, product or service and it's near me, I'm going to see that. Like I'll be, I should be able to see that first, right? Like I, it's like, you know, and, and yes. support, support my local community before I start exactly. shipping things in from Amazon all over, all over the world. Right. So I love the Absolutely. idea. Um, so talk, so tell me. Tell me a little bit. So one of the things that I like to ask about, you know, our ex, our everybody who comes on this uh, podcast is some sort of expert in sales or marketing. And I, I understand your expertise yeah. is content and content creation. Um, so this question, it, this is where we try to be helpful to all those listening, right? All the small businesses that are listening where you have yep. to have some sort of favorite or must have small business tool that you would recommend to uh, to this uh, audience? What kind of small business tools do you think uh, is a must have? And, and, and tell us a little bit of why. 
Yeah. So I actually have a couple um, that I thought about that um, a couple are tools that we use and then a couple are tools that anyone can use. So um, if you're looking just kind of like at a website building focus, um, you know, when someone's looking to build a new website, they kind of have to vet out the platform that's actually going to be used uh, to develop their website. Because a lot of local business owners um, are going to have to maintain their website and change it and um, have to interface with it, you know, after we're done designing. So we use this platform called Duda and it's probably like the most user-friendly platform on the market. I would say I'm a little bit biased, but, sure. um, basically like you shouldn't have to hire a developer if you're a business owner and you want to make simple changes to your own website and the content after it's published. So this is a, the Duda platform allows like people to have web design like really easily in the tips of their fingers. So Olympia is a Duda expert and she knows a lot more than maybe your average person, but any business owner, once we build their website can go in and learn it and do it themselves. So that's one of the really cool things about the platform we use. Um, you know, you don't want to crash your website when you need yeah. to make an edit. <laughs> so um, that's one tool that we love um, and that I love and that like, I'm not a web designer, but I can use Duda um, and it makes writing content so much easier for me. Mm -hmm. So that's one tool that's awesome. Um, the other is Canva. I mean, that one's really popular, but I love Canva because you can get it for free and it really steps up the content that people produce for their own use. So, you know, you can create like email newsletters, you can create social media images, you can create business cards, like small business owners can create anything um, for their brand in Canva. And I use it and it's so much fun too, which is an added bonus because <laughs> yeah, fun is an important part of the job. I, um, uh, I agree. And I, I use, I also use Canva. So I'll, I'll second that everyone. I, I, I love Canva. It's the best. It's the best you can create. I just think it up levels what you put out there for people. Um, and you can add your own flavor to everything, which is awesome. And that's what I like. Um, one of my favorite other parts thing, of it, one of my favorite parts oh, of it yeah, is that you, get, that you get to upload or not upload, but you get to save like your own media kit color packs and, and font yes. color. Like you can store them so that you don't have to go looking for them later. You don't have to remember yep. them. It's already stored. And so if you have a particular color that you use throughout your design works, you put it in your color palette and you just select it all the time. I, that's my, one of my favorite parts because for the longest time I had to, I had to like, I had to keep a word document with all the like hex colors and stuff. And then every time I had to, I had to open that word document every time I did anything in design, because I had to go copy and paste the hex. It was a nightmare anyway, but so we'll move yeah. on. But I, I, I agree with you. I love, I love Canva. Go ahead, go for it. Keep going. Yeah. I second that as well. Yeah. It's super easy to save everything. Um, yeah. I love it. Um, and the other thing that I want to add about so this kind of plays off of Canva, but I think a powerful tool that any business owner can use is leveraging their own social media accounts to create mm -hmm. their content, their content out there. Um, most of these accounts are free um, and you can use their business like Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest. Um, they also have business suites for business owners who can really kind of take content marketing into their own hands. Um, and it's free. Yeah. So you can, you, you can put all your stuff, you can post about your website, you can, you know, share your products, you can share your Canva designs right on your own social media. Um, and then there's people who can help you do that too. Like me, if you, you, you don't have time for that. So um, yeah, leveraging your own social media accounts is huge. I think a lot of people just make them and they never post or they never engage. So yeah, that's a must have. And then um <laughs> Uh, and then the last tool that we use at Local Business First um, for content purposes is called Phrase. Um, it's an AI tool, and a lot of people have controversial opinions about using AI to write, and um, I do too. But I actually love the Phrase tool because it helps you do um, research content research so much faster, and then also optimize whatever content like you're writing, whether it's blogs or website pages. Um, so the, you actually know that it's going to come up in search engines because it it compares and contrasts you against the top uh, topics and content buckets and your competitors. You can, yeah, it's really uh, also user friendly, but 
Um, I would only really recommend it to people who want to write their own content or use AI to write their own content. Otherwise, just know that local business first uses it. And that's what also gives us an edge with uh, the content we produce. Gotcha. So the next question is designed more uh, toward problem solving, right? So where I, I want to know, so what is the biggest problem that your customers bring to you to solve? Now, for those listening, I, I'm assuming you're going to think me asking this question is a little redundant because we know that you're a content writer and, and that you are putting a lot of content on websites. But I want to know about what their expectations, like what what's the problem they're trying to solve with the content? Not simply, I don't know how to do content. I'm just going to hire Melissa and 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 uh, you know local business first in order to to just start getting me more content, right? That doesn't actually mm -hmm. just getting more content or producing more content doesn't necessarily solve the problem you think it does right so so right. How, what what is the what is the problem that they usually bring you what's the core the foundational problem they usually bring to you to solve that you suggest content can solve for them yeah that's a great question so i think what like what opens the door is that people just don't have they don't really know how to cultivate their own online presence whether it's through developing a website or utilizing their content or creating content that helps them do that. So most of our customers come to local business first because they need help with the tech side of things, or they just don't have the time. Um, but then the content is also a big piece of the puzzle because most people just don't realize how powerful of a tool it really is. Like it's more than just, you know, a blurb about your business or about your services. Um, there's really so much that they can use within their content as a, as an SEO tool. Um, Cause when you think about content writing for a while, people were just stuffing keywords and like ad yes. adding millions of keywords and like, you can find keywords online and you can add that to your content, but that's not really the content strategy. So I think like for me, business owners have great ideas and concepts about like how they want to position their company, but just not the words or the strategy to actually communicate it in a way that communicates with both search engines and like their potential customers. So whether they're just like not a good writer or like don't really know how to utilize, um, you know, SEO or like struck, even like the structure of the content in the website has a purpose. Um, so it's really like creating a purpose driven content strategy that tells a story, like is compelling. People want to actually read it. Like, you know, everyone scans these days. No one reads like giant paragraphs. Well, maybe you do. It, it depends on the topic if how interested in it you are. But um, I think what I really saw for people is taking like the intangibles that they have in their mind about what they want to do and then making it actually work on a website and in search engines, if that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> it does, it definitely does. All right. So let's move on to another I, I think a, a bit more helpful question. So if you encountered somebody that told you they were interested in bringing on a sales and or marketing consultant or consultant firm or agency or whatever, what kind of yep. advice, what kind of advice would you give them while they were in their search process? Right. So I kind of have a different approach to sales and marketing. Cause for me, for, for me, it's all about like, kind of the, the SEO, like in what we do, like that is a big piece of the puzzle when it comes to making sales and also like content marketing. So when you're looking for someone to help you do this, whether it's a sales agency, marketing agency, someone to, you know, provide SEO services or design your website, I think like the biggest thing to pay attention to is like as a business owner, Maybe you don't have a ton of time to keep doing this on your own, but you need something that can do the work for you kind of on the back end, which is SEO. So um, someone who really understands like how SEO is always changing and passionate about keeping up with that and making sure that they continue to leverage that with their clients because it, it can become outdated really quick. And that's where people have websites that just don't work for them anymore, not getting traffic not getting clicks is because the SEO is outdated. So just having someone who really can understand and keep up with that and who's passionate about it. And then also a local business. I don't know. I mean, there's different size firms for different types of clients, but if you're a local business, I think it really um, is a advantage to have someone who understands local business. And that's where we come into. 
Um, and then like as content, cause I'm, I think about this in two different ways because content writing can go with marketing and sales and website design, but it can also be its own service. But for like content writing, I would say like just vetting someone to really see if they understand how to communicate a business and like give it a life and a story and like what will resonate with your audience. I think, I don't think content should ever be generic. I think it really should reflect um, kind of the persona of the company and the business owner. So yeah, someone who can just really bring that to life for, for you, um, I think is important to see how they do that. Sure. Okay. So now this is where we get a little silly. This is one of my favorite parts of the podcast, just so you know, <laughs> but we get a little, we get, we get a little bit silly because I like to ask, I used to interview, I, I used to interview hundreds of salespeople, uh, you know, per year, to, to, you know, and I, I was just looking for a way to, uh, you know, to get them outside of their comfort zone. And it just right. turned into a it just turned into a funny question that I like to ask people. So I'm just going to ask you, Melissa. So tell our audience if you could be a superhero, who would it be, and <laughs> tell us why. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm actually gonna I'm probably gonna throw a curveball here on my response. Um, this is fun because I actually I don't really watch any mainstream superheroes in the movies or anything like that. Like maybe as a kid, I like would want to be a Powerpuff girl or something. If anyone knows yeah. that show, <laughs> that was fun. I wanted to be a Powerpuff girl, but nowadays, like <laughs> who I would really want to be is like the heroes of the faith in the, in the Bible. That's like what I want to be and what I want my life to look like. So I, that's probably not your average answer, but that's my answer. <laughs> hey, a hero is a hero, right? doesn't matter. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter where they come from. And, and, you know, a lot of people, I, I just had a conversation the other day about, uh, and, and we, we're not going to get into religion on this podcast, everyone. I just, the, the statement I'm going to make, and then I'll move on. But um, the Bible is the most sold printed written, you know, book in human history. So, and it, and yep. it continue and it continues to be so. So, you know, whether you're Catholic or not, or religious or not, I mean, there's got to be something to that at least. Right. So some of the stories are, creative and 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 or endearing and or and or endearing so uh yeah, I'm, I'm perfectly okay with that i i mean from a superhero perspective i'll take the powder puff girls but uh from my just a, from just a hero in general i'm perfectly everyday okay hero <laughs> there's everyday heroes and then yeah <laughs> yeah um okay so uh one of the last questions i have here for you um Lisa, on on today's podcast is uh, I, I am really a big fan of about, uh, a big fan of paying it forward, meaning, you know, uh, I, I try to give, I try to get our guests to give a shout out to somebody in the industry that they know that they think just does a really remarkable job. So somebody that, that is a sales and or marketing, uh, consultant that you think just really does a nice job. And we'll give them a shout out. And when we post this podcast, I'll, I'll tag them in it just to let them know that somebody was thinking of them. Do you have somebody like that that you think of when you think when somebody asks you, who do you think is a really good, dynamic, outstanding sales and marketing consultant? Um, anybody come to mind for you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's a there's a woman named Shawan Davis, and she's um I would say she's more of on the marketing side of things. Yeah. Um, and, and she's a brand photographer. Do you know Shawan? I know Shawan, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. She's an amazing brand photographer and brand strategist, which I think like really lays the groundwork for strong sales and marketing drives. Um, yeah. And she just is amazing at what she does. She's so creative and so professional and um, she makes beautiful, she does beautiful work and really like helps people, women especially take their kind of their brand and they're offering to the next level. So shout out to Shawan. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and as we wrap it up here, we're going to, we're going to wrap this up. I'll, I'll give you a half a second to just tell everybody, how do we find you? Where do we find you? Uh, are there anything that, you know, any ways that, that people should be, if they look, if they're looking for you, how do, how do they get a hold of you? Yeah. Great question. I think, um, you know, the easiest way is localbusinessfirst.com. Um, we have an easy contact form if you're, interested but you can also connect with me on linkedin um yeah i think that's the best way for now Web website linkedin now and and you are of course watching this and listening to melissa on the uh, on the uh, smart getting connect podcast so if you can't remember any of that 
you can reach out to Smart Getting Connect and we will make sure that you get in touch with uh, with Melissa also. So, uh, Melissa, thank you very much for, for being an awesome guest. I appreciate your, your time and effort on, on today's podcast. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you. With, yeah, and with that, uh, we're out. So keep selling. Thank you.